Hey there, it's a very weary Dr. Rich McLean. I've got a story to tell. Um, I wake up and I'm faced with the same problems that have been a, a, a right up against me for years. I have no possessions. As of Friday, I'll have no home. I've got chronic schizophrenia, ADHD, adjustment disorder, and a cognitive brain impairment from killing myself three years ago. It was deemed fatal and um, I was revived from certain death. And in those three years, I've been under the care of the NDIS. For those three years, I've either been squatting or living in my car. That's not okay for a person with a disability and it's not okay for the Australian government to leave a vulnerable person and put them at great risk willingly consciously and in full knowledge that I could kill myself from the neglect. I woke up this morning, this is what I've got left. This is a empty bag of peaches, some cake mix, some avocados. This is my beautiful dog. Can you say, I love you? I love you. <coughs> That's my beautiful dog. I live for her and um, I've got a computer. I'm in this um, house um, for, the, for the next three days. And then I'm expected to move somewhere um, and pay $300 a week. I only get $400 a week and I've got um, bills coming out of that. So I, I simply cannot survive on um, about $50 a week perpetually moving forward. So I'm going to have to put my dog in the car uh, in the, and take her to the, um, to the pound. And I'm going to have to go and live in my car as an infamous vagrant and a person with a disability in this democracy we call Australia. It's not okay. There are a lot of people who could intervene in this problem, and I'm gonna name them in the video that's just about to come. Right off the bat, I wanna say that this is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, and it victimizes me. Now, Tassin Sultani is an NDIS worker, and he worked with me for um, a number of months, um, during this year. Now he's written a complaints and feedback form to um, Free Living Australia. Zabi is the boss there. And he says in his human rights abuse report, quote, as a support worker, I acknowledge that Dr. Richard William McLean has mental illness. I acknowledge that he's being persecuted as a person of interest, systemically, politically, and financially. And as a result of above issues addressed, He's being mentally and emotionally harmed. As we studied in NDIS Code of Conduct, which says every person with or without a disability has the same right in front of the law, communi community and human humanitarian rights. Since I've observed and worked closely with him for a period of time, he's a person with so much expertise in him. He desires to be back on track with prosperity and dignity, willing to serve the country and the people in it the same as he was doing for more than 30 years. What is really disappointing is he's being deliberately rejected or denied while seeking justice for his well-being in society by different legislative law firms, government offices, even private sectors do deny offering any help. For a person such as him with a disability, it's mine and our duty to support him and give a handful of acceptance and respect to stand on his feet again and deliver justice with what he is suffering. I request the concerned office to please support him because he is not delusional or making any stories for extortion. I have seen, read and acknowledged all his evidence which are not fake. I as a support worker want him to be what he was in the past and a little support in his justice issues will cure him mentally, emotionally and financially. He is a human being with human rights Please deliver the rights to him. Regards, Tassin Sultani. And on the bottom it says, help him get justice that he really help his mental illness. Help him get his business back as an artist, author and advocate. His rights should be given back in society. Help him live freely and treated humanely. That is a human rights abuse report that no one has the courage to sign off on because it will upset um, the people who pay them. Um, Zabi from Free Living Australia is the boss. He refuses after being repeatedly asked to report that to the Australian Human Rights Commission and he refuses 
to acknowledge it even. Now, there's a difficulty in my situation. As a targeted individual, I don't get justice like every normal Australian. The Australian Human Rights Commission refuses, point black, to investigate that report or anything to do with my name. If I die from neglect after um, being forced to live in my car this Friday, it is on Zabi's head. I will not accept that he can't make a human rights abuse report. He said, um, he said to me, I'm not being mean. I honestly care for you and I will do much as for you as I can. If you want me to lie to you just to please you, I can't do that. I think you're an exceptionally smart man and you have gold in your hands and through your art and drawing skills. Wank, wank, wank. I admire your work. Wank, wank, wank. However, it's very unfortunate that you should face the fate that you have. Please recognise that I cannot and will not lie to you and sign off on something I know will not go anywhere, especially if I do not understand the validity of it, even if it hit me in the face. Well, Zabi, this video's just fucking hit you in the face because if I die from neglect after being forced to accept less to live in your home, which I can't do anyway because I can't afford it, and I get forced to live in my car and you have refused to make that human rights abuse um, validated by the authorities, then my death is on your head. And here's a list of other people whose my death will be on their head exceptionally and pointedly because they've refused um, to acknowledge me, they've blacklisted me, and they've refused to even acknowledge me. This is a um, brutal injustice for me, and I've been fighting this for a long time. Three years I've been squatting or living in my car as a fucking homeless vagrant, an infamous homeless vagrant with a mental illness and a chronic disability in this fucking democracy we call Australia, which we supposedly is fair for everyone. It's fucking not. When you're a targeted individual such as me, you are fucking doomed. And I, you know what? If I'm going to be doomed, I'm going to fucking name the people that have caused my fucking destruction and you'll be hung up and fucking quartered in my death. So here we go. But I should be um, living well, comfortably and focusing on my recovery from my mental illness. That's what I should be doing. But instead, I'm fighting a political game of cat and mouse with people like the CEO of the NDIS, Rebecca Falkingham. I have made a public website um, that's asked her repeatedly. Um, it's an urgent appeal for redress and accountability. And there's a reason behind this whole thing, and it's family violence, emboldened by government corruption and the delegitimization of my life. Steve Isonides is my former partner of five years and an ASIO agent. He owes me half a million fucking dollars if I simply got an acknowledgement that that relationship ever existed, which no government agency will do, despite the evidence on the website you can see below. I wouldn't need the NDIS. And these are the things that I said to Rebecca Falkingham. Your responsibilities under the NDIS Code of Conduct and UN Charter of People with a Disability that Australia has ratified in 2008 and signatory to, I demand of you to take action with the following issues as CEO of the NDIS. First of all, I said, I need a home for my dog and I. It is within your remit not to leave me homeless in my car without enough provisions and care as you were going to. It obliterates the entire reason of the NDIS. Second, you left me on the fucking street to live in my car. And I said, acknowledge to me that I lived as a vagrant for over a month, homeless on your watch. Now, um, I said the third thing, accepting less than I deserve, which doesn't exist anyway, I refuse. I said, acknowledge you've left me in barely reasonable accommodation, which doesn't exist. Further, to accept help from the support coordinator that the NDIS nominated would force me to settle for less than I deserve. And these people, these people who come forward and supposedly care for me, they're feigning to care for me, but they're complicit in the cover-up regarding my family violence and Steve Isonides. That's them being complicit in coercive financial control over years. The fourth thing, acknowledge NDIS funding is in addition to my original funding. So they put me in this house now over Christmas 
and they said it was extra funding. And now they've said, oh, sorry, that was including of your funding. Well, I wouldn't have got a, you know, a very luxurious house to live in if I knew my funding was going to go. Going back on their word is cruel and it's caused me immense fear of my funding being exhausted and was calculated and cruel. Now my funding's gone. There's no more money for me to go anywhere. Um, fifth thing, acknowledge my ADHD diagnosis to provide treatment. It's not very hard. I have ADHD and, you, and they're aware that I don't have my dexamphetamine script, which has led me to abusing street drugs. If I had cancer and I was refused chemotherapy, there'd be fucking outrage. If I had a broken leg and they said, sorry, we're not going to plaster that, there'd be fucking outrage. Just because ADHD is invisible does not fucking mean that treatment is negotiable. I need my fucking dexamphetamine script. And I demanded that of her. It's on the public fucking website and you can see that below. Sixth thing, acknowledge my former spouse and negotiate a settlement. I said, witness the documents proving my formal relationship with Stefan Isonides, a narcissistic, sociopathic cunt who has really damaged me and damaged my life. I said, acknowledge the relationship in which I was engaged to be married with him. Acknowledge that I live under the scourge of family violence due to no government agency will admit it existed and therefore it leads to no settlement. Admit... Uh, <laughs> And I said, consult your political peers at AGIS, ASIO, the Ombudsman, Mark Dreyfus, to elicit a statement. She's flat out refused me. I said, the seventh thing, my human rights abuses and your obligation to me, acknowledge my documented human rights abuses by an NDIS worker of the NDIS on this page that's published on the website below. Acknowledge it. I go, if a manager of the National Disability Insurance Scheme becomes aware and receives reports that a person with a disability is experiencing human rights abuses, they have obligations and responsibilities to address the situation. And here are the key actions you as CEO of the NDIS are obliged to take. One, report and document it. Two, investigate it. Three, intervene and prevent further harm. Four, follow NDIS policies and procedures. Five, collaborate with authorities. Six, provide advocacy and support. Seven, review and continuous continue improvement. That process is non-negotiable with a vulnerable person who has got a disability living in his car and the human rights abuses have been documented. I say again, if I kill myself after, um, after I'm forced to live in my car from Friday, it is on your head, Rebecca Falkingham, you fucking dirty dog too scared to um, critique the government that pays your fucking wage and keeps you in a cushy fucking public job, you fucking coward. And I said another one, work cover. Acknowledge this letter from Bridget Hamilton to Workplace Minister Danny Pearson. Acknowledge not one, but two work cases have never been paid to me. And acknowledge this legislation. And it says in the legislation, if the employer or worker neglects, refuses, or is unable to pay compensation in discharge of the employer's liability under section 72.1 within 21 days of receiving the claim for payment of compensation, that liability becomes a liability of the authority. That is exactly on fucking another person's watch, Danny fucking Pearson, the, the work cover minister. He is well fucking aware of this situation. I said the NDIS needs to address the workplace minister, Danny Pearson, and force him to settle not one but two work cover um, cases. And, they need, and this actually needs to be completed as part of the mainstream service before a supported independent living application for me is funded. That needs to occur before seals will be paid. You need to force Danny Pearson, the work safe minister, to respond to you in a way that elicits my work cover claim is the liability of the authority to be paid immediately. And I said, it's just a brutal oppression. This is another thing I demanded of her. Acknowledge the NDIS and the government have failed me regarding the Convention on the Rights of Disabled People under these articles. Article 12, equal recognition before the law. I've never had a lawyer, not once in my fucking 50 years. That's because I'm locked out and I'm a targeted individual. Article 13, access to justice. I've got no access to justice. I'm going to be forced to live in my fucking car. And I'm a doctor, a fucking doctor of philosophy. How is this fucking possible? I'm a targeted individual. Article 15, 
freedom from torture or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. I am being systemically oppressed by this fucking cunt of a government. Article 16. Freedom from exploitation, violence and abuse. I've been violently beaten up inside a hospital by a government thug. All the evidence is on the website. Article 17. Protecting the integrity of the person. I've been fucking brutalised. Article 22. Respect for privacy. I've been under investigation. I've filmed the government agents outside my house. Article 25. Health. I'm not healthy. Poverty's really bad for your health. I've got no psychologist, I've got no psychiatrist, and I haven't even got a fucking GP. The whole fucking health system's fucked me over and excommunicated me. That's all the hospitals I've been in. I've been in seven, seven times in hospital in the past two years, and every time they've dumped me. And once while I was in hospital, in, for three months I was a political prisoner, kept there, and they went to my house with the landlord, and the police and the hospital oversaw them go to my house, get everything I own, my clothes, my books, my bed, everything, and take it to the fucking tip. And then they dumped me in a fucking homeless shelter with fucking a bag of t-shirts to survive on my own, you fucking pig, dog, cunts at Werribee Mercy Hospital, you fucking cunts, I fucking hate you. How could you fucking dare do that to someone? I spent 30 fucking years helping people in this country, and I've spoken in Australian fucking parliament and on local, state and federal levels all over the fucking country and on radio and TV, and the whole fucking world's forsaken me, you fucking dogs. Article 20, 28, adequate standard of living and social protection. I fucking need that. That is a charter that the Australian government has ratified with the UN. It's not negotiable that you fucking do this. And the other thing is, the last thing I asked of Rebecca Falkingham, the fucking cowardly cunt, is that I want an AVO against Steve Isonides. It's not okay that he's threatened to kill me and my dog. You know, just because of my whistleblowing, he's been apparently done by, for his corrupt finances of a million fucking dollars. A million dollars I cost him for his corrupt finances. And now instead of taking responsibility, he's threatened to kill me and my dog, my beautiful dog. What a fucking dog. I can't re report it to police. I went to Orange Door, the family violence people and other f family violence agencies, and they refuse to intervene. It's not okay. And that message to the CEO, uh, the CEO of the NDIS is on my website, and you can see that website below. It's a fucking disgrace the way she's treated me, and it's on her head if I'm dead in the next two weeks. Danny Pearson's another fucking person who refuses to acknowledge me. I'm owed not one, but two work cover cases. And the liability, if nothing can be done, becomes a liability of the authority. Danny Pearson, if I die in the next two weeks, you are going to be strung up and fucking quartered by the Australian public fucking dog. Hey there, it's a very weary Dr. Rich McLean. I've got a story to tell. Um, I wake up and I'm faced with the same problems that have been a, a, a right up against me for years. I have no possessions. As of Friday, I'll have no home. I've got chronic schizophrenia, ADHD, adjustment disorder, and a cognitive brain impairment from killing myself three years ago. It was deemed fatal, and um, I was revived from certain death. And in those three years, I've been under the care of the NDIS. For those three years, I've either been squatting or living in my car. That's not okay for a person with a disability and it's not okay for the Australian government to leave a vulnerable person and put them at great risk willingly, consciously, and in full knowledge that I could kill myself from the neglect. I woke up this morning, this is what I've got left. This is a empty bag of peaches, some cake mix, some avocados. This is my beautiful dog. Can you say, I love you? I love you. <laughs> That's my beautiful dog. I live for her. And um, I've got a computer. I'm in this um, house um, for, the, for the next three days. And then I'm expected to move somewhere um, and pay $300 a week. I only get $400 a week. And I've got um, bills coming out of that. So I, I simply cannot survive on um, about $50 a week, perpetually moving forward. 
So I'm going to have to put my dog in the car uh, in the, and take her to the, um, to the pound. And I'm going to have to go and live in my car as an infamous vagrant and a person with a disability in this democracy we call Australia. It's not okay. There are a lot of people who could intervene in this problem and I'm going to name them in the video that's just about to come. I'm really tired of fighting. I really am. I can't fight this beast anymore. The whole government with everyone on board. My I can't go to my mother. I can't go to a police officer. I can't go to a lawyer. I can't go to an ombudsman. I can't go to a fireman. I can't go to the NDIS. I can't go to St. Australia where my book was Book of the Year. I can't go to anywhere. There's no one who will help me. If no one helps me, um, I'll be dead. I'll literally be dead. I'm not suicidal. I protest this shit because I want a better life. If you can help me, my pay ID's here at the bottom, please go to the website and have a look. It's a brutal oppression and this victimization is an ungodly way of persecuting someone to death and it just does it in a conscious and malicious, systemic and political way. It's not okay. It's time for someone to stand up with me, otherwise I'll be dead and all the people um, who have acted to my detriment will be hung up, quartered and crucified after I'm literally fucking crucified.